Hello and welcome to a, another Cornish Radio Amateur Club um, slideshow video um, and this time it's on decibels. And the picture you can see there is uh, Alexander Graham Bell, the so-called father of the telephone or inventor of the telephone, 1842 to 1922. And apparently the first word said over the uh, telephone to his assistant who was in an adjacent room uh, where they'd set up a circuit said he said Mr. Watson come here I want to see you but let's move on to what we need to study for the advanced examination for the RSGB so the syllabus says that we should recall the equations for decibel power and voltage ratios. We should recall or determine the power gain or loss of various dB ratios based on plus or minus 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 and 10, 20 and 30 dBs. And this includes examples such as 25 watts equals 20 minus 6 or 14 dBW. So in a way, I think here they're giving us a bit of choice and they're limiting the scope of the um, decibel ratios that they're going to ask us to 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 10, 20 and 30. But we've got to remember that since decibels are normally added or subtracted, or I should say always added or subtracted, um, then we need to make up intermediate values um, and they've given an example of this in the last line there where they've used 20 minus 6. Right, let's have a look at an amplifier. We've got a small amplifier here represented by the blue triangle and what we're saying there is that there is one watt into the amplifier and two watts out. So, if we were going to express the gain of that amplifier, we would say the gain, in, uh, as expressed in a linear way, is power out over power in, which is 2 over 1. And that makes sense, the gain is, is twice. If we put 2 watt in, we'd get 4 watt out. If we put 50 watts in, we'd get 100 watts out provided that the amplifier was capable of dealing with it, of course. But the gain is 2. We can also express the gain in decibels. And here's the formula that we talked about uh, when we were looking at what the syllabus was. The gain in decibels is 10 times log to the base 10 of power out over power in. And we'll be having a look at that formula in a bit more detail. But that is a formula that you need to commit to memory. And you do need to remember that because it's 10 log 10, it relates to power. If it had been 20 times log 10, it would either relate to voltage or current. Now, in the RSGB syllabus, I think we only look at the um, gain for voltages and not currents, but they are, in fact, the same. So gain in dB for power equals 10 log 10 power out over power in. And in this case, if we work that out, and we will be in a minute, that would be 3 decibels or 3 dB. So, reiterating, there are two ways of looking at a gain, or indeed a loss. In yellow there, we have the linear representation of the gain. Two times, three times, six times.
And here we have the decibel representation of the gain. Could be 3 dBs, would be twice, 6 dBs, 4 times, etc. And we've learnt some of those ratios for the um, foundation and intermediate courses. So we know some of them off by heart anyway. So there we are. There are the two representations again. For that amplifier with one watt in and two watt out, then the gain expressed as a linear gain is two times, or the gain in dB is three dB. If we had a loss through the amplifier, perhaps it was an attenuator rather than an amplifier, if we had two watt in to whatever device and one watt out, then the gain of that device would be, in linear terms, a half. Now we've got a choice how we express this verbally. We could say it's got a loss of two times or a gain of a half. So we, we would say that the uh, gain, the formula still exists, is the output over the input, which is 1 watt over 2 watt, which is a half. And if we work that out in dBs, we have minus 3 dBs. And it's worth noting that any gain of less than linear 1, in other words, a loss, any gain of less than linear 1 will give an equivalent gain in decibels that is negative. So negative figures in decibels represent a uh, less than 1 gain, or you could call it a loss. So a linear gain of less than 1 is a loss. A negative decibel gain is a loss. They're the same thing. So we can see from the formula that decibels are logarithmic ratios. There's the formula again, the gain dB equals 10 log 10 times power out of the power in, or should I say 10 log 10 of power out of the power in. And this begs the question, what are logarithms? Well, from a definition point of view, and we don't need to, to learn this, but perhaps at least understand it in outline, it's a quantity representing the power to which a fixed number, the base, must be raised to produce a given number. It's a quantity representing the power to which a fixed base, a fixed number, the base, must be raised to produce a given number. Now that will seem confusing perhaps at this point, but we will be circling back to that um, in the next few minutes. And it's also remembering that logarithms are indices. Now, before we dive into logarithms and decibels uh, from a calculations perspective, let's see how we manage them on the calculator. Now, there are two operations that we need to be able to perform on the calculator. One is to take the logarithm of a number, and the other one is, given a logarithm, take the anti-log to go back to a fixed number. Let's look at where they are on the calculator. On the top row of the calculator, 
you've got the second function key, and then two keys to the right, you've got the log key. And pressing the log key takes a logarithm of a number. So if you have a number in the calculator's display and you press that key, you will have the logarithm of the number that was in the display. Just above log on that key, you can see 10 to the x. We've said that logarithms are indices. This is the reverse operation. Accessing that number will give you the anti-log. So given a logarithm in the display, it will return to the number. So recapping, you press log to get the log of the number on the display. And you press the green 10 to the x to get the anti-log of the number of, on the display. And of course you access the 10 to the x using the second function key. So to get to the anti-log, you press second function and then the uh, 10 to the x labeled button. So there are two button presses to get the anti-log and just one to get to the log. Now that we can take the log of a number and get the anti-log of a logarithm, let's have a look at a couple of examples. So, how was it done before manually? Well, we'll have a look at this just for interest's sake. But before the age of calculators, if we were doing the same sum, this is how we would do it. If we were looking at the same sum, we would say uh, 2 times 2 equals 4. Well, we would look up the log of 2. And here it is here. We would see 2 here and there's the log point 3010. And then for the second two, we'd have the same 0 0.30. One O, oh. and we would add them up to get zero point six O oh, two O, oh. and then we would look around and find the nearest amongst all of these. We'd go down this column here, and we'd find the zero nearest, and we'd say, "Ah, oh, this is the nearest figure six O oh, two one." And the equivalent for that then would be 4. It's for us to sort out the number of zeros through estimation. That's one of the uh, problems with using the physical tables. But the answer then would equal to 4. So we've taken the log of 2, added it to the log of 2, and then looked up the anti-log going the other way, and we would have 4. Right, we said that uh, logarithms, you know, what are logarithms, uh, and logarithms are uh, indices. And it's worth thinking and bearing in mind that logarithms were used um, before calculators were invented, and um, they were used basically to um, make multiplication of difficult numbers a lot easier. So logarithms are 
indices. And let's take um, an example. Let's say, for example, that we wanted to multiply 100 by 100. So, 100 times 100, and this is obviously fairly easy to do. We know the answer is 10,000. How can we simplify this, though? Well, we know that 100 is 10 times 10. So we can write it down as 10 squared. And of course, this 100 is exactly the same. And the rule is that when you multiply two numbers with indices, you add the indices. So the answer here then is 10 to the power 4. And you can see that those two lines are equivalent, they're the same. So in this case, where is the logarithm? Well, the logarithm is the indice. And what we're saying is that 2 is the number that you have to raise 10 by to get our fixed number. You can refer back to the definition that is given at the beginning of this video. So 10 is the base in this case, 2 is the log, and so we add logs to multiply numbers. We find out the log of 100, which is 2. We find out the log of 100 again, which is 2. And we get the answer, 2 plus 2 is 4, and the answer is 10 to the 4. If we find out what the anti-log of 4 is, it's 10,000. Let's do another example. Let's multiply 2 by 2. And once again, we know that the answer is 4. But let's use logs. Well, I'll write down the bases first. It's base 10 logs that we're using. And by the way, although there are other bases, as many as you like, um, and others that are commonly used, um, 10, base 10 is most commonly used, and we will only be considering base 10. So I'll write down base 10 twice. The question is, what do I have to raise 10 by to get 2? Well, it's obviously a small number, isn't it? Because actually, um, 2 is less than 10. So it'll be a fraction, or a number of less than 1. Because 10 to the 1 is 10. So I pick up my calculator. I type in 2, and press the log button. And the answer comes out as 0 0.3010. And obviously the same for this one. Now, the rule is that I add up the indices. So the answer is 10 to the power 0 0.602. Oh, that is 3010, 0 0.3010 added to 0 0.3010. So that's my answer. But if I want to get it back into a more readable form, I can take the anti-log of 
0.6020. And I do that with the second function, 10 to the x on the calculator. So I ensure that I've got 0 0.6020 in my display. And I press second function, 10 to the x. And I get a number that looks like 0.6020, which is basically equivalent to 4. Now, why did I get a slightly different number doing it this way? Well, I rounded up, for the sake of uh, simplicity, I rounded up the 0.3010. It's a, it's a bigger number. If you do the whole thing on the calculator, including adding the uh, logarithms together, you probably will get 4 in the display. So there we have it. Adding numbers together, adding logarithms together, uh, is a way of multiplying. So a quick reminder then that um, we've got two types of, of gain that we consider. A linear gain, in other words how many times something is increased in terms of power, and uh, the example we had was a, an amplifier with one watt in and two watt out, and we said the gain was two times. In other words, the linear gain is the output over the input. And the units are not really units, it's a ratio, it's times. And then we have the logarithmic way of doing it um, in decibels. And we said that there is a formula for the decibels, the gain in dBs is equal to 10 times log to the base 10 power out over power in. And for this example, the gain would be 3 dB. And we should be familiar with the way of getting the logarithmic ratio on the calculator. So that's the linear way of doing it and the logarithmic or decibel way of doing it. Let's work through a couple of examples. If we have a look at um, an amplifier, and we say that on the input we've got uh, one watt, and on the output we've got four watts, then the linear gain is four over one. 4 over 1 times. And the decibel gain is 10 times log to the base 10 of 4 over 1. Now if we put in 4 into our calculator and press the log button we get this part here as 0 0.6020 and if we multiply it by 10, we have 6 dB, which should be familiar to us.
If we have an amplifier and we know that the gain is, let's say, 12 dB, and we want to find out how many times that is, how many times that is in terms of gain, we have to find out what 12 dB is as a linear ratio. So the first thing to do is put it into bells, or decibels. So 12 dB is equivalent to 1.2 bells. And there we are in the fundamental ratio. <coughs> me. So now, to find out what that is in times, we have to find out what the number is when we raise the base, which is 10, to the 1.2. And for that, we type in 1.2 into our calculator. And then the second function button, and 10 to the x, and we come out with 15.8 times. So if we had a 12 dB amplifier and we put in 6 milliwatts on the input, what would be the output? It would be 6 milliwatts times 15.8, and that would be 95 milliwatts on the output. Now, both of uh, both linear ratios and logarithmic ratios um, for an amplifier, we can just talk about times or dB. But sometimes we use them to refer to an absolute power level. So sometimes you will see a power level on an output of, let's say, six d b w and that's saying that here we have a gain of uh, a power level that is 6 db higher than a watt so we can either remember that 6 db is four times and therefore the output is four watts or we can say 6 dB is 0.6 bells, and we can use the formula 10 to the 0 0.6, which we can put into our calculator 0 0.6, and press the second function 10 to the x, and we get 3.98. Four, four watts. So unless you're talking about the gain of an amplifier or the loss in a feeder, if you're talking about a power level, it always has to be uh, with relation to something. And so the common ones that you see are dBW, which you've just seen, which is dB with respect to a watt. You see dBm, which is decibels with respect to one milliwatt. We also see, again, for antennas with respect to another antenna. 
So a gain of an antenna might be quoted in dBi. This is the gain of this antenna, the antenna in question, with respect to the isotropic radiator. Or sometimes dBd, which is again with respect to a dipole. So statements like the output of the transmitter is 40 dB is meaningless. It has to be dB with respect to a watt or a milliwatt or something. The statement that a, an amplifier might have a gain of 5 dB is meaningful because we're saying the gain is 5 dB and that is the output with respect to the input. So that's implicit. So unless we're talking about output with respect to input, if we're looking for an absolute value, it has to, do, has to be dB with respect to something else. Let's work through another worked example. Let's imagine three cascaded amplifiers. One in the middle, another one, and another one. <clears throat> and let's say that the this one has a gain of 3 dB, this one has a gain of 10 dB, and this one has a gain of 6 dB. So the gain of the three amplifiers taken together is 3 plus 10 plus 6. So the overall gain of the uh, cascaded amplifiers is 19 dB. Oops, excuse me, 19 dB. And if we want to find what that is in times, we can say, say that that is equivalent to or equals. We type in 1.9 because we have to go back to bells and we press second function 10 to the x and that's 79.4 times or I'm going to call it approximately 80 times. Let's look at working them out individually as times. We know that 3 dB is 2 times. We know that 10 dB is the equivalent to 10 times. And we know that 6 dB is equal to 4 times. So the linear gain is 2 times 10, which is 20, times 4, which is 80. So, going back to the syllabus, we needed to recall the equations for decibel power and voltage ratios. Now, we've looked at decibel power ratios, and we've said uh, that the gain in dBs is equal to 10 log to the base 10 
power out over power in. And we also need to be able to state the gain for voltage ratios. And because, if you remember, power is equal to IV, it's also equal to V squared over R, and it's also equal to I squared R, you'll see that power is proportional to V squared. So that changes the equation then to gain voltage. And dV is equal to 20 log to base 10 V out over V in. And I think you can find this on your um, formula sheet in the examination. So if you had an amplifier that was a voltage amplifier, it had one volt in and two volt out. The voltage gain would be twenty times log of 2 is 0 0.3010 is equal to 6 dB. In other words, twice what it would have been if it had been a power amplifier. And finally, addressing the example there, remember with linear gain, you're um, adding together, um, uh, so beg your pardon, with linear gain you're multiplying and dividing, and with logarithmic gain you're uh, adding and subtracting. So if you're given 14 dBW, that's 14 dB with respect to a, a watt. How many watts is that? Well, you know that 20 dBW is equal to 100 watts. And 4 dB, and, and uh, 4 times rather, is equal to 6 dB. And if you divide them, you subtract. So that is 14 dBW is 100 divided by 4 is equivalent to 25 watts. Now we'll be going through quite a few of these in class, so don't be intimidated if that one seems a little difficult. Um, we'll go through them and align them with the sort of questions that we're going to get in the exam. So thank you. Indeed, uh, once again.